Power Pages, the latest piece of our low code tool set here in Power Platform for building business applications. But what is it? When would you use it? And most importantly, how much is it going to cost you? I'm going to take you through all of that here. Power Pages is the part of the platform here you can use to build your business website. But importantly, the use case for Power Pages is where it is a data driven website of some kind. In other words, you want to put your data out for your customers to view, add to, interact with. So a classic case here is like a customer service complaints management or ticket management kind of system. Things like permit applications, maybe you've got students with enrollment queries and things like that. So anything where you've got your data and you need your customers to be able to view it or to log in and with authenticated access, log, change, add, read, all of those kinds of things, that's what this enables. And importantly, it is all done with low code. Let's have a look at some screenshots so that you get a bit more of an idea of what we're dealing with. The tables that we're putting out through your Power Pages for your customers to interact with are built in Dataverse. So low code table building experience. If you're already familiar with model driven apps, you've got this one sorted already. And then we're dragging and dropping the pieces together to build a website that enables this kind of thing. You can see here we've got a user logged in and there's a bunch of applications they've got in relation to their student enrollment that they can work through. They can see where everything's up to and interact with that. So in terms of licensing, you might be familiar with this in the past from Power Apps Portals, which is what they used to be called. If you're a current Power Apps Portals user, do not fear. It's the same technology underneath, same Dynamics 365 portal, same piece underneath. But we've got a much nicer designer on the top of it. So big difference here in licensing. If you've come from that Power Apps Portal side of things, a few things that we can thankfully say goodbye to now. There is now no longer a distinction between external and internal users. So this was a restriction that held back the old Power Apps portals from becoming something that would be used where you've got a massive internal use case. Let's say you've got like a university wide, you need everyone to be able to log in and do things, but you've got a thousand staff members and they don't all have Power Apps licenses. That was a barrier before. No more. <laughs> Not a problem. Internal and external are treated the same way. So if you want to be building a portal that has a primarily large user base of internal users, this is now the time to get on board with that. We are also getting rid of the concept of daily logins. So old Power Apps portals used to be authenticated based on daily use. If you had a use case where someone say a customer service ticket and they log the ticket, they come back the next day to check on the status and the next day to check on the status and so on. And it's like three lots of logins that it's counting each day. Not doing that anymore. We're moving to monthly, which is a whole lot better. And we're also moving away from the idea of page views. So it used to be in portals that you would license by counting the number of page views that would be there, which was pretty hard to figure out. If you had a form that had like four or five different page clicks, that's going to start adding up. And working out, you know, how many pages users are going to view was, you know, pretty complex and impossible. So farewell <laughs> to all of these things. They are gone. We now for power pages, it's hard to get used to saying it, Power Pages, we have these two options. We have the option of either subscription licensing or pay as you go, which is awesome. If you've got a use case where you're not, you don't have like frequent constant year round use. So we'll come to that in a second. Let's take a look at the subscription options first. So subscription plans come in two flavors. The first one here is for authenticated users. So this is probably the most common way that portals are used because the idea is that you want your users to be able to log in and have authenticated access to the things that they're interacting with in your data. These prices are all in US dollars. You can go and have a look at the website that I've linked below if you want to see it in your local currency or do the appropriate conversions. So the concept here is that this looks like the same price on the surface as what we had for Power Apps portals. However, it's much more favorable because this is based on per month. <laughs> so my example earlier of somebody who's coming in and logging in and they've logged their ticket and then they're checking on the status, checking on the status, checking on the status over three days, that's now counted as one logged in, login as long as it's in a calendar month but you're not paying for three days worth of logins anymore. So now when we're working out the price of your portal, what we need to figure out is how many unique users are you going to have per month rather than how many times are they going to log in on a daily basis, which makes a whole 
lot more sense. And in the end, even though this price looks the same on the screen, it's going to end up costing you a whole lot less. And remember, these can be your internal users as well. So they don't have to have that $5 or $10 or $20 Power Apps license to do this anymore. You can put them on this $2 license. Now, if you already have some users who are licensed with Power Apps, you don't double pay for it. So if that's the app that they're using on their Power App license or if they've got an unlimited plan, you don't have to double pay for those users. And then we've got the anonymous users, which used to be called unauthenticated. So this is where people are not using some kind of uh, login to identify themselves. They're just browsing on the website. And again, this is now done on this concept of users, anonymous users on the site. This is done with a little cookie ID. So now you're not having to count how many pages they're viewing. This is just down to the unique number of users per month. <laughs> now, the other important thing to know about subscription pricing here is that there are tiered layers within all of this. So this is the base price. You buy them in these capacity packs in packs of 100 or packs of 500, depending on whether you're buying them for authenticated or anonymous users. But if you're working on a much larger scale here, again, check out the licensing guide. There are tiered prices, so the price does get cheaper as you go up the scale. All right, pay-as-you-go plans. This is brand new, so we didn't used to have this before. So this is great if you've got something where perhaps people are really only seasonally interacting with your website. Maybe you've got something that's really big at a certain time of the year around Christmas or something. You don't want to be paying a subscription. So the rates here, as I bring them up, we've got, again, authenticated users and anonymous users. You'll see it's pretty much double the previous one, but this means you don't have to be paying it all year round. This is an on-demand situation. So rather than paying for that capacity, you know, every single month or year, you're just paying for it when you use it. This is metered through your Azure subscription. So this gives you a great option if you're working with that seasonal demand. You can't mix or match here, by the way. You do need to choose either that subscription pricing or the pay as you go. The other great thing about all of this is that this now includes Dataverse storage. So additional benefit in that license price again looks the same on the screen but you're getting a lot more bang for your buck here that you're getting some dataverse storage in with that all as well i really hope this encourages you to give power pages a try especially for those use cases that didn't work before if you'd like to learn more about licensing in other parts of the platform check out my other videos here thanks for watching